everybody, my name is AFH Gaming, but before we get anywhere near the video, please make sure to go and check out the Everlasting Summer fan page can we to keep updated with the game and all the awesome features coming soon. Lots and lots of amazing pictures and posts. And um, yeah, basically the site is where all Everlasting Summer fans unite. If you want to have any questions, make sure to ask this young fella right here. He's so cute and sexy, but I'm not gay, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gay. And let's not forget to mention the beautifulest girl in the camp is Slavia, of course. Am I right or wrong? I'm sure I'm right. If I zoom in very closely, you can see both of her boobies collapse as she skips through the moonlight. And let's not forget to mention the maddest girl in the game, Elisa, who could be even part of the Illu Illuminati and her big boobies! Let's continue the story. But even at those lineups which I attended, I was just sleeping on my feet. No. Now you know. Slavia smiled naturally. And what should I do? Her words stirred a mass of emotions inside me. On one hand, I'll get out of this cursed camp at last. I might get some answers. On the other, I have just found something very important to me, and now I have to let it go? Which is Slavia, of course. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. <clears throat> and and when is the departure? In the evening, at 5 or 6 o'clock. We still have a lot of time. Yes, but I have something, some things to do. And I should find Xenia. She might be worried since I, since I was absent for the whole night. Oh, well, worrying is so much like her. See you at lunch. Slava gave me a kiss on the cheek and ran away. I kept standing at Canteen's entrance. I had absolutely nothing to do, nothing to pack, so the only thing to do was to wander around the, the camp till evening and think, think, think. I would give anything to be able to empty my head for this ten hours. A voice pulled me out of my trance. Ugh. Hello! Electronics stood before me, as merry as usual. You too! I replied absent-minded. You know, the whole camp is talking about you. I guess I know why. So you... did it already? He asked, giggling. Do you really think that concerns you? Well, no, I just, uh... Then keep quiet! <laughs> so rude. Leaving him alone with his speculations, I walked to the square. Why does he behave in a way that drives everyone mad? Although, it's probably just me, me he mad maddens. Oh my god, she always keeps bumping into me. I was completely immersed in my thoughts, not looking around. I didn't notice Miku until she bumped into me. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I should be more careful. I, I was lost in thoughts and didn't notice you. You know uh, how it happens. Oh, and hi. I looked through her and kept walking. Oh, Simeon, wait a second. What's up with Slavia? Tell me. It's so interesting. It seems that everyone in the whole camp expects me to know about it. Not, uh, no, not that I'm curious, but since everything is also serious. Saying that she is not curious is like de denying a universal truth. Nothing special. I answered without turning back. Well, if you don't want to. I tried to isolate myself from the outside irritation so Miku, Miku's other words passed by. The square scenery was soon replaced by the beach. Luckily, the juvenile gem of the Soviet pop scene wasn't around. I took a place on the sand and started gazing at the river. Why on earth is the whole camp so interested in my relationship with Slavia? In my word, in my world, nobody would have said a word. At least out, out, not out, lo not out loud. At least you don't hear the things they say behind your back. For now, I was ready to endure gossip just as long as I don't have to report to everyone about my private life. The sun was rising higher and higher, and I was nodding off. My eyes were already closed when I suddenly heard someone sitting down next to me. And it's Lisa. It was Elisa. Congratulations! Meaning? Don't you know? Yeah, it doesn't take an Einstein to work it out. To be honest, I'm sick and tired of this. Everyone here just has to mention it. Enough! And what did you expect? It is out of the ordinary for the camp, I would even say it's exceptional. She laughed. And to show up the camp leader just like that, even Oliana couldn't manage it. 
Me neither, probably. I didn't know how to respond to that or whether it was a compliment or mockery. You know, you're making too big deal out of it. There was nothing unusual for me. Moreover, I don't understand why you have to poke your nose into my life. Don't you think it's just my personal business and nobody else's? Maybe so, maybe so. Elisa said mysteriously. We sat silently for a while. I wanted her to leave as soon as possible, but Elisa was watching the pioneers on the, at, on the beach. And it didn't seem that she was planning to go anywhere. So, what are you going to do next? What are you talking about? Today's the last day. Yeah, so what? Everyone will leave. So? And Slavia will leave too. And you will leave too. So? You'll break up. <laughs> I know that already. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously. And what do you think about it, that? Oh, I don't want to break up with her, though. Damn, I need to do something. What? What should I think? I can't stay here forever. Of course you can't. But what? Will you let her... Would you... Will you let her go just like that? No. I mean, what can I do? Frankly speaking, I really had no idea what to do next. My head was complete mess. I'll be able to get out of here. That was the most important thing for me during last, le last week. And now I have to answer a much more difficult question. How did summer romances end for common Soviet teenagers? And my romance was a summer one for sure. They, they just went home and that was it. They could live thousands of kilometers away from each other. In my case, in different worlds. It's not like one can come up with a decent solution for such a problem in a couple of hours. Like I know, it's up to you to decide. Elisa grinned, stood up and ran into the river. Oh, God. There was only about half an hour till lunch, so I slowly walked to the canteen. Pioneers hadn't managed to occupy all the free tables, so I was able to choose a quite good place. But, uh, but to my regret, not my favorite one in the corner. I was just about to start eating when somebody abruptly pulled out a chair at the table near me and took a seat. Ah. Uh, Hi there, how are you? It was Oliana, an extraordinarily polite version of her. I was fine until now. I sneered. Oh, come on, better tell me what are you going to do? Eat. I sighed. I'm not talking about that. The session's over and you and Sabi are gonna, are gonna part. What's next? It's like my future is the priority issue for all the local residents. Hey. What really is the matter? Just curious. Curious about what? I don't ask you what you're gonna do tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, in a month. Why do you have to get into someone else's life? I'm not getting into anything. Oyana said offended. I'm not really good at all that stuff. True enough, you're still a kid. So you've got to explain since you're the adult here. What should I explain? So you're gonna you're going to stay in touch through letters, right? And then you and then you're going to go to this camp next summer together? Talking through letters. It sounds so wild to me. And I don't mean the idea of paper sheets and envelopes, I mean the possibility of losing Slavia for a year or probably even longer. Or forever. So what? May I join? I raised my eyes and saw Slavia standing near me with a food tray. Perfect timing! Now you should tell her how you feel! Okay, it's time to go! Oyana jumped and dashed off to a far corner of the canteen. What were you talking about? Uh, you know her, what could we possibly be talking about? Slavia smiled. Took care of your business? Yeah, now I'm completely free, I can help you pack your stuff. It's not like I've got much to pack. Well, then you can help me with my stuff. Sure. That was the perfect opportunity for a quiet talk with her. Yes, although I had not the slightest idea of what I should talk about. Oh my god. Soon enough, we finished our meal and headed to Slavia's cabin. <clears throat> Everything in it, is, in it was clean and neat, unlike an Olga Dmitrievna's cabin. Oh, I'm not sure what we should start with. She took out her travel bag and started to rummage throughout through a cabinet. 
Meanwhile, I sat on the bed and started to gather my thoughts. Do you have any plans for after the camp? What are you going to do? Well, you know... She raised her eyes to mine and gave me a smile. I'll go back to school. Ah, uh, yeah. And you? What about me? It's not like I'm really considering going to high school for a second time. Me? Well, me too, I guess. Although I don't really feel like going back to my city. Seriously speaking, even I felt like going back. I had nowhere to go anyway. Why? Just because... Because there's nothing to do there, nothing at all, and there's no one waiting for me there. But your parents! My parents? Well, you know, they're not there now. But where are they then? They're sort of working aboard. Ah, so you're one lucky guy. She smiled merrily. Why? Then s they send you foreign stuff and all. I wouldn't call my situation lucky as such. Well, anyway... Don't be upset! She really looks like she doesn't understand what I'm saying. I'm not upset about it. And it was true. Then what's up? Many things. For example? Well, for example... I was about to begin a vast outburst, outburst about my situation and, and my wish not to have to be to part with Slavia when the door was flung open with a bang and Zenya entered. Ah, there you are! Yes, we're packing. I see. It's a good thing I didn't come in 10 minutes later or I would have disturbed your packing. Slavia blushed and kept on stuffing her things inside a bag anxiously. What's up with it? What's up, heroic lover boy? That form of address gave me the creeps. What? Nothing. She stared. She stared at me intently for some time. Watch it. Now more than just for yourself depends on your choices. I didn't reply, and with those words, Zenia left the cabin. <clears throat> what? What did she mean? I think you can never know for sure. And yet. Well, I wanted to talk about you about my about it myself. I was able to start, but then. About what? Slavia looked at me carefully. It's just today we're leaving, right? Right. And we will move back to our cities. Well, yeah. And when will I see you again? Slavia grew thoughtful. I don't know. And I don't know either. But you could write me letters. She smiled, but her smile didn't bring me peace of mind. Yes, of course, but you know, that's not the same. What is it then? Can I go with you? I decided to take a chance and speak plainly. And what will you do there? Slavia seemed not to be surprised, but a bit v vexed. Studying my parents. And what will people say? I wasn't thinking about the opinions of other people. And to be honest, they don't worry me much. Well, you can always find a way. What way? Well, think of something. Uh, Semyon, we are too young for this. In fact, I'm not. So what? Maybe after some time. How much time do we need? A year, two years, five? You say it as if... I don't know. She seems confused. Confused. So everything that happened here was just a holiday romance? I started getting angry. No, of course not. Just... What? I'm not ready to discuss it right now. Let's talk about it later. When later? We have only a couple of hours left till departure. Slavia said nothing and continued to pack her things. I'd expected almost any kind of reaction from her, but not this. In fact, she ha had she just pushed me away. It turns out she doesn't need to continue our relationship. No, no, no! I'm gonna get the bad ending. So I'm not that important to her. You think it's... It's only complicated for you? It seems to me that it's hard for you too, but for some reason you don't think so. And what if I told you that I don't have a place to go? To go back to? That since Monday, there is no more life for me and I have to start from scratch? I don't know. That doesn't sound very reasonable. And it shouldn't, but it's true. 
And then what? Please explain. I came, I came to this camp by accident. Actually, I'm from another time, perhaps from another world, from the beginning of the 21st century, and I'm, the, I'm older than I seem. I don't really know how I got here. Slavia stared at me but said nothing. That the moment dragged on endlessly. I waited for her to laugh at me, so, so call me sick or something even worse. And why are you telling me all this? She finally asked quietly. I want you to understand my situation. But it... It just sounds stupid. Of course. If I were you, I would react the same way. And what do you expect from me? I don't know. I just felt that I needed to confess. I'm not saying that you're lying and I don't think you're crazy, but you have to understand I can't just accept it. Yes, I understand. I just thought that it would help you to understand my situation and my motivation for my actions. It didn't to I it didn't, to be honest. I sighed in frustration. And my opinion hasn't changed. But you'd better be off. You need to pack your stuff or you'll be late. There's let's talk later. I wasn't going to argue. If Slavia hasn't changed her her mind after my confession, then it's pointless to press our on right now. Distressed, distressed, I shuffled off to Olga Matrina's cabin. The camp leader stood out at the doors and looked like she was waiting for me. Why are you so gloomy? Did something happen? No, nothing. Just came to pack my things. Oh, come on. Let it out. You might feel better. Well, how do you think I can prove that I'm telling the truth to somebody who doesn't believe me? Are you absolutely sure that you're telling the truth? Absolutely! Then perhaps they might just need time to consider. Except there's no time left. Then I don't know. She shrugged her shoulders in dismay. Well, it's something at, at least. I tossed my winter clothing into a bag and headed to the bus stop. <clears throat> and a, if a couple of, of days ago I'd seen the Icarus standing at the gate of the camp and waiting for pioneers, I wouldn't ha I would have been the happiest person in this reality. But right now, I wasn't in the mood to rejoice. There was still plenty of time left until the bus departure time. I sat down on the curb and buried my head in the hands. Why so sad? A, fam a familiar voice pulled me out of my thoughts. Just... Had a fight with Slavia? You could say that. And what's the reason? She doesn't believe that I'm an alien from the future. I smiled ironically. I wouldn't believe it either, said Lena seriously. If I were in your shoes, neither would I. It's not a big deal. You'll make up from, from a quarrel. Yeah, but there's not much time left to. Left to what? To make the right choice. <laughs> she just doesn't even care at all. After a while, the whole camp assembled together at the bus stop. Everyone's here began Olga Dmitrievna. You're leaving our camp today, and I'd like to tell you something at parting. She was she was visibly nervous and desperately lost her for words. I hope that you'll remember the time you've spent here for a, for a lifetime, and that you'll retain only pleasant memories about Sylvionic. I also hope that you be became at least a little, bit, a little bit better, managed to learn something, and found new friends. Just come back next year. The camp leader turned away. It seems like she was trying to hold back her tears. I didn't accept her to get so emotional, although her speech sounded like a complete nonsense to me as usual. Of course, this is where I met Slavia, but now we were going through a, a tough time, and what will happen next is so is absolutely unclear. So I didn't care about whether I'll miss this place and Olga Nemchimno or not. Unlikely. When the pioneers started to get on the bus, I pushed through the crowd to Slavia. Let's sit together. Okay, she said quietly. I even thought I was I saw the shadow of a smile off her face. The bus flew across the expanses of my new world. Outside fields followed for followed forests and then calm rivers and highlands. I felt as familiar with all this as if it sh it was my it was my own homeland. Anyway, the surroundings were the least of my concerns now. I was trying hard to find the right words to start a conversation. We <coughs> 
We'd been ju we'd just been sitting there probably for a couple of hours, but all attempts to, s to strike up a conversation had ended with one word, word answer. Forget about what I said before. I don't want to make excuses or say that it's not true. It's just now the most important thing to me is you. I understand. She looked at me carefully. Even if I, I if, even if I sometimes act the wrong way and I talk nonsense, regardless, the main thing for me now is to be with you, and it always will be. I understand that I acted too recklessly and planned stupid ventures, but we can try to make everything right together, you and me. Slavio was still gazing at me. Do you realize that it will be difficult that you that you can't just run blindly into the dark because there. Then there will be so many problems that we won't be able to solve. Yes, I understand that now, but for you, I am prepared for anything. She didn't say a word, but just kissed me gently and put her head on my shoulder. It definitely meant yes. Oh my god, it worked! Thank you, Samyon, for thinking smartness. I didn't want to bother her anymore, let her sleep. The point is that Slavia finally understood me, understood what she, she means to me. She realized that I'll do anything for her sake. And even if I'm overreacting or deciding too early, she's ready to put me into the right path. The path that we'll walk together. Ugh. Night started to claim in rights, and the bus settled down to sleep. At first I tried to fight it, but is there any use in enduring and wasting my efforts when the future had finally become crystal clear for me? I think I got the good ending. My eyes shut just for a moment. Day what? Ooh, this game's interesting. There are dreams that you don't want to wake up from. It's like one is floating down, down a warm river towards a place far beyond the horizon, blissfully watching the vain world hidden behind the clouds. The past is left behind. It e its echoes do not tear, tear your soul. And the future is right here. You just have to reach out. It doesn't matter what is awaiting you there. The very process of immersing yourself is, is this fairy world of century and happiness is, is itself much more important. I've always believed that the universe was once in this state and one day it will return to you again. Um, our life is just a blink of an eye, just a second in comparison to the universe. The birth and death of stars and is a minute and those of galaxies are hours. But even all of that... All put together will not even be a day. Nobody thinks how to live each specific second, so does it really matter what each drop in a stormy river running beyond the horizon of existence does? What? No, 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 no. Oh my. Did I just get the bad ending? No. <laughs> I opened my eyes and stretched blissfully. Was this really just all a dream? I had no desire to stand up, as I felt like I was in perfect bliss muffled in a blanket. After all, I don't have to go anywhere, as usual, as usual, actually, and I don't have any plans. So why should I, shouldn't I just sleep? I rolled over and stared at the old worn wallpaper covering the curled wall. Curled, cur curled wall. I wonder how long ago the last time they renovated this room was, and why it is here, and why it does here have wallpaper instead of bare? Would anyway. They're a little bit rushing here, a little bit of spelling mistakes. Vague warming bells be began ringing somewhere deep in my mind. I threw the blanket away, jumped up, and furiously began to look around. Yes, I was in my flat again. At first, I was paralyzed. The shock was so strong that my brain was unable to process that w what was going on. I just stood and gazing on the screen of the monitor on the table opposite me. I couldn't think. I even forgot to breathe. Finally, my mind began to clear. What happened anyway? I fell asleep on the bus going to a district center. Yes, something like that. And Slavia was sitting by, by, by my side. And now I'm back here. Seems like during the week I spent there in the camp, I had I had gotten so used to the fact that I've never returned to my previous life that now, I just ha have no idea how to react to all this. After all, at my first, at first my main wish has was to go home, but in the end everything was like in a bad movie. At last I had come back, but I am still shocked. I got the bad ending. Great. No, I felt no fear. I was rather interested and upset. After all. I'd already made my mind to start a new life with Slavia, leaving all my problems behind, insults, suffering, self-examination, unfinished affairs, and plans for the future. Obviously, that life could no, could not be worse than this one at least. But there's no one returning it, so it now. 
On the other hand, if someone had told me a week ago, about a week ago, <laughs> uh, that I would be sent into a different world, just like that, in the blink of an eye, I would not have be believed him. So what makes such a fantastic event happening again so po impossible? Moving my legs with difficulty, I went to the kitchen, got a glass of water, and returned to my room. The ice-cold liquid with a, distinct w with a disgusting a aftertaste of bleaching powder revived me to some degree. Now I have to decide what to do next. Suddenly I realized that I could not bear the silence. After returning the computer on, I launched a random song in the player and managed to calm down somewhat. And seriously speaking, what can I do? Recently I realized that absolutely nothing is up to me. By someone, by someone's will, I, by someone will, I was pulled out of my usual wor world and s and then sent back. No answer were found during the week in the camp. What's the point in speculating any now? I must forget everything that happened, like a bad dream. Maybe those were just hallucinations. I don't really care now. The only thing that prevented me from completely forgetting this short period of my life was Slavia. I recall her smile and all the time we spent together. Uh, from the meeting on the very first day to the night in the forest and our departure from the camp, my heart furiously jumped inside my chest, spreading oppressive pain all throughout my body. Just skip to the bad end already! My god! I liked her at the first sight, so gentle, caring, understanding. Just like the that enemy heroine that was, what was her name? The the one who helped an antithetical fellow like me, like me deal with depression. And if you think about it, there are no such people in real life. Slavia asked nothing in return, needed in, needed no encouragement, never accepted to me, never accepted to be understood or pe or praised for her work. She was just being herself. A girl that cannot exist in real life. If you think cl if you think clearly, that's really exactly what she was. I'm not gonna stop. I'm just gonna keep on reading, keep on reading until I finish this. It seems like I've I've seen one single week long dream about the pioneer camp, Soviet teenagers, and the camp leader about warm summer nights and gatherings around a fire about light hearted children games and simply and simple human joys. About one moment that lasted a week and the everlasting summer. Oh, you said it, but not just seen. I've been there. I was I was a part of everything. My eyes unwillingly filled with tears, not tears of pain or despair, tears of sorrow and bright melancholy. Even if everything is over, I experienced something that most people could never have dreamed about. Slavia image flashed in my head brighter and brighter. I would love so much for her to return from that camp with me. Maybe I have nothing to offend her now, but my entire life is still ahead of me. I guess I learned a lot of useful lessons from these events. I couldn't help thinking that it was all seems to be perfect. Um, like it was written according to some simple plan. A loser hero, a fantastic incident, and a wonderful transformation. I guess it's not possible. Not in this life. Will I become the person I was before only a day or a week later? Well, it's the, it's the most realistic course of events. One thing's for sure, I'll never be able to go back. Oh, finally, from Ming Long Lecture. Oh no. This is actually quite sad. About a month has passed since I returned from Sovionic, or to say it's more correctly since I woke up. I returned to my usual life as a loner, surfing the internet for days, going outside only to shop as expecting it began to suit me again. Well, obviously moments of melancholy and depression occurred, a person like me just can't do without them, but they lasted no longer than usual, except those times when while sleeping, I returned to that summer, that mysterious camp. But after awakening, I tried to banish these thoughts as soon as possible after all. What's the point in dreaming of being a wizard? Even if mir miracles happen, and I was proved that they do, they happen completely independent of us. The word sweet doesn't give you sweet taste regardless of how often you pronounce it. <laughs> but nevertheless, something has changed in my existence. Formerly, I didn't think ahead, didn't really care how long I would live, whether one week, four... For, or 40 years, but now I looked forward to do it with optimism. Not like I tried to change anything or to become a different person, but the world now seemed more understandable. Not simple, not friendly. No, not friendly at all, but just understandable. Before I, go Before I just couldn't cope with some events or facts, though, I, I, I kind of realized that they were they were there for some reason. Now I started seeing life as something simpler. What happens, happens for the best. Or at least it happens, and I can 
I can live with it, and if I can, I'm powerless in that case. I guess start. I guess started smiling off more often, or at least I didn't carry that look of deep universal frustration 24/7. Oh my God! Even if my even my even my acquaintances on the on the internet obviously no noticed some change in me, and their opinions agreed that these changes are good. Now I think I'm ready to live on thanks to Sovionic and its inhabitants. Without them, I wouldn't be able. To. Well, I got the bad ending, guys. It was the beginning of January. The city had barely recovered from the from the New Year hangover. The streets were almost empty during the day, not to mention the nights when the when the only stranger walking down the street seemed extremely busy with some business, rushing somewhere for a reason that couldn't wait. I had no reason. I had no such reason. I just decided to have a little walk. It's necessary to go s get some fresh air tonight. Sometimes, a winter's night is the best time to be alone with yourself. I always thought that the true sol solitude um, can can be felt in a crowd rather than in a burning hot desert boundless plain or or on top of a mountain covered with snow in the stream of people words thoughts and aspirations everyone had their own aim and direction and i was the only one strolling among them deserving no attention from others maybe there's like there are like vectors moving in different directions they never meet at at, at um cartesian co coordinates it's the same thing here. The, these people are walking, running in one direction, and I'm dragging along in the other. But did I feel lonely? Before, yes, but now, highly unlikely. In the bright, blighting, lying lights of the city, the, no the noise of cars and the swirling crowds, I enjoyed a hev heavenly symphony of silence. But now the situation is slightly different. There is, there is just me in, this, in, this, in the street, so I am alone, not only within my own self, but within the whole world. Being a sand grain in a desert is not the same thing as being a water drop in the ocean. In the crowd, nobody noticed me, nobody paid any attention, but now everyone who peeks out the window or seeing me while driving past will think, why can't he just stay home? Maybe he has some urgent matter. Suppose he's mad or he's just drunk. I never like standing out on the, on the crowd when it is not appropriate, so opposing society was never an option for me. But now it was different, as if I tried to tell everybody, look, I can be happy too, you need your TV and your hot chocolate, but I just need the snow, the night, a dark room and a dull monitor screen, look, I'm not any worse of, of than you. I felt sadness in my heart, but it was a serene, uh, serene sadness. Do I really need the things that they, they have and uh, I do not? Maybe I, was, I have something mo much more valuable. Oh my god, this is so wrong. I didn't notice how I came to the bus stop of 410 route. This brings back memories. I sat down and rummaged in my pockets trying to find cigarettes. However, the packet was empty. Fine. I crumbled it and threw it to the bin. Maybe I'll be get healthier. I lonely s I lo a lonely star was shining in the sky. Today I read on the internet that according to the calculations of scientists, one of the most beautiful astronomical events has already ceased to exist and will and will see it only decades later maybe the star has already exploded as as well and now it is the it is the only beautiful image in the night sky somewhere near a lost planet or in uh, somewhere near a lost planet on the edge of the galaxy however why does one or another get thing exist it is simply because it's just there has shape and can be touched or is it because we believe that it exists at first thought the answer is simple but on the other hand even if the star is gone, we can still see its cold light. Maybe it helped someone to get out of the snowy winter forest, gave, me s gave someone hope, or a bit warmth to someone else. Could a simple astronomical object that exploded God knows when do all this? Can billions of people believe in such, in, in something that doesn't really exist? But belief isn't never, itself never made any object real, at least none that I've never heard of. Oh no. The snowfall grew stronger, now it was a real snowstorm, midnight. I was about to leave, but suddenly someone emerged from the solid white veil and ran under the bus stop roof. It was certainly a clearly- Is that Slavia? Please tell me that's her! It was clearly a girl, as she had a long ponytail hanging out of her hood. It is Slavia! Oh my god, I got the good ending! Oh my god! I'm so happy! She stood with her back to me, so I couldn't make out her face. Excuse me, H has the late bus already left? She asked without turning to me. Where can she be heading so late? The 410 must be the 
must be the most cursed root in the city. Not only does it sometimes takes people away to another reality, but it can't e even arrive when you don't want when you want to. There is one more bus coming just after midnight, I think. Thank you. The smile was clear in her voice. For some time, I just sat silently examining the girl. Finally, she spoke. Where are you going so late? Is it really that interesting for her? Just having a walk, I answered thoughtfully. And you? Are you here for something important? Well, not really. Just going home. Where do you live? I couldn't help asking. Far away, she said vaguely. And I live nearby. It's a good area here. I would say that there couldn't be a worse one. I didn't have too many options. You don't like it? I don't know, I got used to it by now. I think that people can be happy anywhere they want. Perhaps. Well, think of it. People like even the North Pole in situations, in stations, I mean. And in the Sahara Desert, and in many other places, it's the people themselves that are the most important. It's difficult to disagree with you. My comments sound so uh, uh, philosophical that, unconsciously, that I unconsciously smile. You don't sound too honest to me. Now, why would I say that, madam? She laughed quietly. I think you're a good person. Now she turned and... Yes! The good ending! Yes! I realized why her voice is sure and everything else seemed familiar to me. Slavia stood in front of me. Please live together! For a moment, I lost the ability to speak. But just for a moment. Of course, it, it could just be a girl who looks like Slavia from my dream. Or am, am I experiencing the strongest deja vu? The city is not a, pi a pioneer camp. I am not wearing uniform and it's not summer now. Trying to convince myself that it's a, just an illusion, I decide to ask a question. Have we met before? She carefully inspected me and smiled. I don't think so. But your face seems familiar. You... Have you ever been to a pioneer camp as a kid? Of course not! She laughed. When I was born, they'd already been dis they've already been disabandoned. Oh, right. Although, I had a dream recently. She thought for a second. Me too. I mean, about a pioneer camp. Maybe that is where we met, we've met. The girl said seriously. Possibly. By the way, my name is Slavia. Actually, my full name is Slaviana, but everyone calls me Slavia. You can do that too. Yes, that is her. I was about to tell her that I know, but then I stopped short. After all, is it that important to know why Slavia from my dream is standing right here, right now in front of me, at this frozen stop of the charmed bus number 410? After all, there are dreams that you don't want to wake up from. And mine is Simeon. What a lovely name. It starts with an S too. Yeah. So you live far away, don't you? Well, not really. She, s she named the district. I thought it would be somewhere in the south. Why? Don't know. Maybe because you look like a pioneer. Oh, and you, and you, and your pioneers. Slavia laughed. Maybe she, maybe we wouldn't ever meet if not for them. Why? Her expression became serious. Just a joke. Listen, do you agree that the world exists because we be believe in it? That's like some kind of subjective idealism. Slavia thought for a bit. This school of uh, this law. Uh, philosophy became close to me recently. Well, I don't know. I'm not that good with these subjects. What are you? What are your subjects then? She smiled. Different ones, no doubt. But it's just been a few minutes since we met. But seems like it's been much longer. For some reason, I've got the same feeling. An awkward pause followed. Snowfall has eased, but there was still no bus. I looked at my watch and assumed that it wouldn't ar arrive at all. Slavia seemed to feel even colder by now, as her cheeks grew more red and her hair were now moving fr um, frantically, trying to warm her body. Seems like the bus for like the 410 bus is done for, for today. I guess, she said so sadly. If you want, I started af after pulling myself together. What? You can come stay at my place. But we've just met. She laughed. She didn't seem frightened even a tiny bit. Yes, I understand, but it's so cold outside. Aren't you afraid? Slavia looked at me playfully. Me? Should I be? Who knows? Who knows? I, I just suggested it. Don't think anything of that sort. I started to make excuses. I understand, she laughed. If you don't mind, of course. Even though it seemed impossible, she flushed even more. You mean she blushed even more? What do you mean by flushed? Should we go? Let's wait a bit longer. Maybe we'll arrive. Okay. Ah, it's not gonna arrive. So what do you do in your spare time? 
Slappy asked after a while. I, well, work at, a, at home, I kind of. I just couldn't tell her that I do nothing. Sounds good. Why? Don't know. You have a lot of free time. You don't have anywhere to, to go anywhere and so on. And you? I asked, trying to change the subject somehow. I'm studying. Getting an um, anthropographer's degree? What is that? Slavia asked seriously. Never mind. I'll be an ecologist. Well, a career to be proud of. We chatted about random things and the bus was still nowhere to be seen. It was past one already. Time passed by so fast. I guess Slavia understood my thoughts. Shall we go? She smiled. I stood up and headed slowly towards my house. She carefully held into my arm and looked into my eyes. You know, I'm sure that this year will be better than the previous one. Oh my god, this is so heart touching. I'm about to cry. Oh my god, this is so heart touching. Every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its own outline, synthesis, contents, key points, a prologue, and an epilogue. And there is no book which, if you read it again, would not reveal new details you didn't notice before. Every story has a beginning and its end. Almost every. Oh my god, is that the end? I got the good ending, guys. Oh my god. I'm sorry for crying, guys. It's just so heart touching. <laughs> I shouldn't cry right now. It brings back memories. <laughs> Amazing story, loved it, really enjoyed it. Oh. Thank you and goodbye for now. Oh yeah, because they're gonna make new rooms, of course. That was a perfect ending, really. Semyon and Slavia shall now live together. That was the end, guys. Well, uh, I don't know what to say. I just want to thank you very much for sticking with me for this series and this walkthrough. I really enjoyed this gameplay. I love the story so much. One of my most favorite visual novels, to say. And I can't thank you enough for um, for being here with me for uh, for this series. And of course, if you want to see more uh, other routes, Please tell me in the comment section below and tell me what girl I should go for next. Any girl you want, just tell me which one to go for. But anyways, this is the end of the series. I think I'm going to take a break of this game about a week or so. And yeah, and by that time, uh, the comments in the section down below should state which girl I should go next. And yeah, that's basically it. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the series, please leave a like and subscribe to join the FH Army. And I'll see you all in my next video. Adios!